I'm Jeanette Rooker, Charles' sister. I've come to collect this box. You see, about two years ago, Charles gave me instructions that upon his death, I was to collect it and hold it until it was called for. By whom, Mrs. Rooker? I don't know. Uh, Charles said they would have a letter from him, and whoever showed it to me was to receive the box. Do you know what's in it? I did just look now. Nothing much of interest, really. Just files filled with a variety of financial records. Did you notice if anything was marked on the files? Yes, Lindsay and company. Uh, they were filled with securities and bonds. I don't know what to make of it. Nor do I. Do you mind if I take those papers to Sherlock Holmes for closer study? No, I'm sorry. I did make a promise to my brother. And now I really must return home. Good day. Nathan Ravel and Mr. Jacquard are both members at the club. Nathan and I are partners and frequently played against Jacquard and his partner, Moran. Sebastian Moran? Yes. Well, how well did the two of you meet their challenge? <laughs> it's hard to believe, but at first we won. <laughs> They're two of the best players at the club. But then our luck changed. We couldn't win no matter how good the cards were. Did they cheat? Cheat? Of course not. Club members are gentlemen. Did you have a wager on the game, Mr. Adair? A small one. A pound or two, nothing important. And Ravel? I don't know. When did you last see Ravel? The night before he died. We were playing against Jacquard and Moran till midnight. <laughs> we didn't win a game all night. Nathan seemed upset. He and Moran seemed to have a bit of a disagreement. What about the night Ravel was murdered? I had a drink here with Moran. He said he was waiting for Nathan. When he didn't show, he got upset. He waited till a little before eight and then left. He told me if Nathan stopped by to tell him to meet him at the Tankerville. When was the last time you saw Jacquard? Last night about 8.30. He'd been here since 4.30. He received a postal telegram. After reading it, he jumped from his chair saying he had unexpected business. Have you seen Moran lately? Not for the last few days. I understand he's on the continent. Charles Attard had an account with us for years. As you know, he was one of the top paid barristers in London, and his bank account attested to that fact. Both he and Roland Jacquard kept large balances in their accounts. What about Nathan Ravel? He also had an account with us, and we handled the sale of his mother's property after she died three years ago. That left him a nice little sum, which he added to from time to time. Then, starting about a month ago, his balance started to drop to practically nothing. Here you have it, Holmes. Mr. Ravel's history with Drummond's Bank. Let's have a look, Watson. Half past midnight last night, I picked up a young woman at the place where you said the murder was. She wanted me to make a stop at the Elephant Castle, and then I took her round. Sorry, but Mr. Chambers left for Africa three weeks ago, so he can add to his collection of dead animal heads on his study wall. Appalling, isn't it? Indeed. My stepson was not welcome in this house. He was a no good monkey bank. A no good... Leslie, dear. Quiet, darling. I'll handle this. He spent all of his time in card rooms and bedrooms. I threw him out of the house six years ago and haven't seen him since. The only question I have is why someone hasn't killed him before that. Oh, Ashley! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to leave. You're upsetting my wife. Ashley, I'm not... Quiet, upsetting. darling. I'll handle this. I tried to make a man of him, but couldn't. Perhaps if he'd gone grouse hunting with me in Scotland, I could have. You must leave now. Good day. Good day. Roland Jacquard was here last night. He picked up Letitia. How serious was the romance between Miss Garcia and Jacquard? Well, not as serious as Jacquard would have liked. <laughs> Letitia is a fun-loving girl. She has lots of admirers, and uh, she knows how to take advantage of it. Do you know who else she was taking her fun with, so to speak? Well, there are three who come to mind. Jacquard, but I guess we might say he's no longer in the running. 
Marco Escobedo, the pugilist, who seems particularly smitten with her. And Celesta Ogilvy, who is rather a strange bird. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill Jacquard? No, sir. No. I've been studying drama all my life, but I only watch it, mate. I don't write it. Ellis is in France, but he left you a telegram, Holmes. Let's have a look. Paris, June 4th, 1890. Arrived Paris, June 1st. Moran on the same train. Yesterday saw Moran and Moriarty with Giraud, signed Ellis. Oh, I shudder to imagine those three scoundrels keeping company. What were you doing at Roland Jacquard's house this morning? I didn't do nothing to nobody. Leave me alone. What? Well, you were spotted at the scene of the crime. Did you murder Jacquard? I didn't murder nobody. It was Marco. Marco, my brother. Thank you. Mr. Escobedo, wake up, please. Mm. What do you want? Who are you? I'm Dr. Watson. I need to ask you a few questions about Roland Jacquard. I can tell you nothing. I did not even know him. You know who he was? Yes. He was ladies' man. He was interested in my lady. Letitia Garcia. He did not love her the way I love her. He... What difference does it make? He's dead. Now go away! Where were you last night? At the ring. Then I go to a restaurant. Which one? Spaniards Inn. Then I come home and go to bed. I have a big fight tomorrow. I'm in training. I need my sleep. Do you know who might have wanted to kill Jacquard? No. And I don't care. Now go away! I have to get up and go to the gym. <coughs> I've just spent a grueling day at the bank of England and Drummond's trying to determine the extent of the loss Mr. Ravel has caused our firm. How do you suppose he managed it? It was so simple. Once he knew the accounts and their account numbers, it was only a matter of transferring the money into letters of credit or any account he chose. How did he learn the account numbers? Now, that's the mystery. Neil Patterson and myself are the only ones who have access to that information. Is there no one else? Yeah, there's Mrs. Lindsay, but all of her dealings with the firm are handled through a solicitor, a Charles Abad. Abad? Do you mean a Todd? Hmm? Oh, yes, uh, that's the chap. Oh. Oh. Miss Garcia, I know this must be difficult for you. Roland Jacquard and I were very good friends. We had fun together. I know nothing about his death. When did you last see him? Two days ago. Think hard, Miss Garcia. Who might have wanted him dead? I told you, I don't know anything about it, and I mean it. Now leave me alone at once. Mm, I see. Mr. Jacquard was a good customer, a collector of handguns. He wasn't shot, was he? No. Good. Bad for business to have one's customers die from gunshots. <laughs> what do you need to know? The purchases he's made from you over the past year. Let me check my sales books. Here we are. On the 7th of March of this year, he had a special order. A 30 caliber Luffer show pistol. Nice little French beauty. Before that, he bought an American-made pepper box, and we sent it at his request to uh, Charles Attard. I'm interested in a Mauser T11. Got one right here. We are the only shop in London that carries this little beauty. It takes an 11 millimeter cartridge that's guaranteed to stop an elephant. You planning a safari then? Oh, good heavens, no. I'm investigating a murder. Uh, might you tell me how many have been sold? Two. One to Ralph Chambers, the big game hunter, on the 10th of May. Yves Metier bought the other one on the 19th of May. By any chance, do you know Roland Jacquard? Gun collector. Met him once or twice. He, uh... Took his business to the Grant Arms Company. Didn't set right with him buying guns from a lady.
The Mauser T11? No, sir, we don't stock it. Do you know who does? Try M. Richards. You might have some luck there. I believe Attard was in the pay of Moriarty. So he sought not justice, but protection of the underworld from justice. Indeed, I'm afraid you're right, Holmes. The funny thing about these murders is no one in the underground is talking. Whenever I mention it, they clam up. I see and hear everything. <gasps> Last night I stayed up late reading Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I just couldn't put it down. When at about 12.30, a woman came running out of Mrs. Jacquard's house and got into a passing hansom. Then, about an hour later, a delivery wagon pulled up to Jacquard's house. A man went to the door, and a few minutes later, two men came out carrying a rug. A rug? Well, that's what it looked like to me. They put it in the wagon and then drove away. Do you recall what they looked like, Mrs. Ivory? No, it was too dark. Uh, but I do recall what it said on the delivery wagon. Excellent work. What was it? Landmark Limited. Um, would you like to stay for tea? That's very kind, Mrs. Ivory, but I must be going. I have a murder to solve. Pity. I'm usually quite fastidious, but I left everything as I found it this morning. Now oh, that poor, poor man. Did you see Mr. Jacquard last night? No, lovey. I went home early after leaving dinner out for him and the guest, as he asked. Interesting. What is it, Holmes? A Mauser T11 and a Lothershire pistol. Lothershire has been recently fired. Three shots. And the Mauser? Not in the last day or so. Mr. Jacquard was quite the gun collector, I can assure you. Well, Watson, here we have letters of credit totaling thousands of pounds. My word. And I have merely found his wallet with 140 pounds and a recent playbill from the Elephant and Castle Theatre. Do you know who Mr. Jacquard was entertaining last night? No, I don't, Ducky. But I did see something strange this morning. The Persian mug is missing from that corner of the room. I don't know why anyone would want to steal a rug. Do you know anyone else who might be able to shed light on this? You might try nosy Mrs. Ivory next door. She's always in everybody's business. I'm interested in one of your delivery wagons. Do you need to move a stiff? No, I'm referring to the fact that one of your wagons was seen last night near Russell Square. Russell Square? Last night? <laughs> Damn that Escobedo. Escobedo? Warn Escobedo, my worker. I've told him never to take that wagon without telling me. Are you certain it was he? I only have one wagon and one employee. I wondered why there was a rug on the back of it this morning. Now it all makes sense. Do you know where Juan Escobedo is now? He reported in sick. But if you track him down... Tell him he's fired. I've been thinking it over, Holmes, and I've decided that I don't need outside help. The case is progressing adequately, and you are dismissed. Sorry, Inspector, but one should never begin to eat from a plate if one has no intention of finishing the meal. I have no choice but to continue. You are as persistent as a gnat. I'll give you my report, but please take it and leave. That's odd. I... Uh... I, I saw it here this morning. You've misplaced the report, Inspector? Sorry. I suppose I must have been blind not to see it, Mr. Holmes. But it appears Mr. Ravel has embezzled over £6,000 of negotiable securities and letters of credit. How did he manage to accomplish that, Mr. Patterson? I don't know. Trust and secrecy are crucial in our firm. No one but my partner and I know our clients' portfolios. Ravel would have had to request each security by number from the right bank. So far, securities have been found missing from three banks. Your partner is Mr. Lindsay? Uh, no, uh, he died four years ago. His wife, Kathleen, owns his shares, but does not actively participate in the business. My partner's name is Jeffrey Farber, but what does this have to do with anything? All I hope is that you may shed some light on this crime, Mr. Holmes. This has all been very difficult. You see, I knew three of the victims. Charles, 
Charles Attard was my solicitor, Roland Jacquard a friend, and Nathan Revelle worked for my late husband's firm, Lindsay and Company. For the life of me, I can't imagine why anyone would want to kill them. Did the victims know one another, Mrs. Lindsay? Roland and Charles were friends. In fact, Roland introduced me to Charles. I suppose Charles must have met Ravel when he went to the firm to handle my business affairs, but he never mentioned it. I don't think Roland knew Ravel at all. I can't imagine how he would. The Thames River is the longest and most important waterway in England. Roman writers referred to it as the Temesis, and the name, meaning broad river, is probably Celtic in origin. The river has been deepened below London Bridge so that the largest ships can reach the docks of London. Oh, and listen to this, Holmes. If I must. It has been said that it is the most important river in the world because it runs liquid history. At the moment it is running with the blood of our victims. Let us carry on, shall we, Watson? Well, Watson, what did you discover in Maud's room? Nothing much of interest. A Spartan bed in an old sea chest with several articles inside. Such as? Mm, 200 pounds cash, box of Mauser 11 millimeter shells, and a Webley revolver. And you call that nothing much of interest? No. Oh. <laughs> did I say that? So sorry. Meek's assistant said Sir Jasper headed home before anyone dropped off any more dead bodies. Did he leave any information? He said he gave it to your street ruffians. So, we've made this trip unnecessarily. Pity. Well, Watson, pray let us continue. Jolly good idea. I am Yves Métier. What do you want? We understand you purchased a Mauser T11 from M. Richards. Yes. When I left Paris, all my friends told me to get a gun to protect myself in London. They were so right. On the way home from the gun shop, I was attacked. Brutally attacked by this little man in filthy clothing. He took the Mauser and my wallet and left me with a bump on my head. That is all I know. Cyril Maud? A bad egg he was. Nothing but trouble the whole time he was here. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience, perhaps I could speak with one of his friends. Friends? <laughs> Maud wouldn't know what the word meant. The closest thing he had to a friend was his cellmate, uh, Curtis Twiggs. I don't know which one of them was worse. Then Mr. Twiggs will have to do. Perhaps he will speak with me. I'm not sorry to say he's no longer here. He was released back into our unsuspecting society in 1886. Surprisingly, I've not heard of him since. I'm sure my gain is society's laws. Well, Watson, what did old HR have to say? Nothing. Nothing? I'm surprised. He had nothing to say because he isn't in. That is unfortunate. I could find a criminal record on only one of the murder victims. Who was it, O'Brien? Cyril Maud. As you probably found out at the yard, he has a long record. Mm. The only thing that looks strange is that within two years he was arrested three times for violent crimes, and each case was dismissed for lack of evidence. He had the same co-defendant every time, one Curtis Twiggs. Fascinating. Oh. Letitia mentioned Roland Jacquard a number of times, but I never had the pleasure of meeting him. She is a popular girl. At times, I think she really can't handle it. After all, she is only a child. What is your relationship with Miss Garcia? I am like a father figure. Someone she can come to when she needs advice, which is often. What has she told you about Jacquard? That he wanted to marry her, but she is in love with someone else. A man from her home village. She just isn't ready to give up her freedom, I suppose. Who is it that she's in love with, Sir Lester? Marco. Marco Escobedo. Sugar? No, thank you. Roland Jacquard was such a cad. Half the husbands in London gave a sigh of relief at his demise, and uh, all the women cried. And you know, his skill at the card tables was legendary. Did he cheat? Only if he had to. You see, he had the great skill of convincing you that you were the better player. And it was only the luck of the cards that was against you. 
Who were his romantic interests, Pike? Well, Roland's love life was on the wane. Uh, most of his attention was going to Leticia Garcia, the actress. But I believe it was one of those classic cases where he was in love with someone he ultimately couldn't have. Of course, he was still seeing Linda Randolph. The wife of the shipping tycoon. Ooh, you do keep up on your gossip. I'm pleased. As I'd heard there'd been some very unpleasant episodes between Vincent and Roland. And uh, he was still seeing Kathleen Lindsay. But uh, I don't think there was anything between them but friendship. Do you know Charles Attard? That pettifogger? A friend of Roland's. I don't know what Roland saw in him. He was no more than a bug blighting the earth. I'm terribly sorry, but the Randolphs left two weeks ago for a round-the-world cruise. Oh, that sounds lovely. It is. At last I have the house to myself. Good day. How did he think about the Thames murders? Well, two of the victims was regulars here. Cyril Maud and Curtis Twiggs. Twiggs? Yeah, Twiggs. The one the police identified as Leo Shepard. Twiggs and Maud were partners, a part of the Moriarty gang. Word had it that they were Moran's strong-arm boys. Twiggs was the knife man, and Maud was a deadly aim with a pistol. Together, they made quite a mean pair. Any word on why they were murdered? No, nothing. Although, after the murder, word had it that Moran wanted to find Twigs. No reason, but then <laughs> Moran don't have to give one. When did you last see them? The night Maud was murdered. He and Twigs were sitting here, drinking their dinners. Around 8 o'clock, Moran comes in, talks to them, and leaves. Maud checks over his pistol. They drained their pints and dashed off. The room is as neat as a pin, exactly the way Mr. Ravel left it. Do you know how he spent his time? Well, he worked during the days and he spent most of his evenings at some club. He did drop down to my place occasionally for an hand of whist now and again. He loved that game. I still can't believe that he's gone. I don't know what the world is coming to when a man that's as kind and unassuming as Mr. Ravel can't walk the streets without being murdered. It is a sad state of affairs. Oh, that's right. I must remember to get that window fixed. I beg your pardon? Oh, just talking to myself. I noticed that there was a window broken. It must have happened when Mr. Ravel was trying to close it. This creaky old house has the stickiest windows. When was it broken? I haven't the foggiest. I noticed it was broken when I was showing the room to the police the day after the murder. I'd forgotten all about it. <laughs> what can you tell me about Marco Escobedo? I'll tell you, that worthless bum better put up a good fight. I understand he was here last night working out. You've got to be joking. He only works out in bars and bedrooms. Why, he hasn't seen the inside of a ring for four months. Excuse me. Oh, it's you again. I was wondering if anyone ever arrived for your brother's box. Yes, someone did. His name was Sebastian Moran. Mrs. Shepard, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your son Leo's death. How many times do I have to tell you people Leo's not dead? That big baboon face Inspector Lestrade scared me out to death, he did. Coming here to tell me my son was dead, dragged me down to Bart's to look at this big ugly guy, made my flesh creep, it did. But my son's at sea. I've been for four weeks. Had his wallet stolen before he left and they found it on the stiff. I don't know why that police inspector refused to believe me, but in my opinion, he was as dense as the dead man. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Shepard. Well, I should hope so. Bumber shoots. I can't believe that all that Clark had for me today was a list of all the murder victims' birthdays. Ridiculous. I mean, whatever is the point of celebrating the birthdays of dead men? Was Marco Escobedo here for dinner last night? I suppose, if you can call six shots of whiskey dinner. Oh, I see. 
He arrived about 10 o'clock and went straight to the bar and started drinking. Or should I say, continued drinking. He was quite drunk and in a very mean mood. What time did he leave? When we closed at midnight. He didn't even leave a tip. Do you recall if Roland Jacquard had dinner here on the evening of May 30th? He arrived at 7.30 p.m. and was joined by Mrs. Kathleen Lindsay. He ordered a bottle of Gros Rose, 76, to accompany their duck. Uh, I'm not interested in what they ate, but I am curious to know when they left. They left at midnight. Did anyone else join them? Colonel Sebastian Moran at 9.10. He had one drink with them and left at 9.45. Was that the last time you saw Jacquard? No, 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 no. The last time I saw Mr. Jacquard was June 1. He spent most of the afternoon in the game room, came into the dining room around 8.30. He had dinner alone and left at 9.30. Thank you. This has been most illuminating. We are looking for Curtis Twiggs. He's not here. Gave up his room four day ago. Do you know where he went? No. He just left a bag with me. Said he'd be back for it. Didn't say when. Can we see the bag? For a few quid, perhaps. Now don't take nothing. That Twig, he's a bad man. He'd kill me, he would. We won't take anything, we just want to look. What have you discovered, Holmes? One gold watch with the initial CA engraved on the back. Several pieces of jewelry and rings. Hmm. Two wallets with identification in the names of Charles Attard and Nathan Revelle. And a seven inch stiletto with a pearl handle. Okay, you've looked enough, I think. Yes. I believe you are right. 